Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we're going to be doing another reaction and analysis today. Less of a reaction, however, because I do know the song that we're going to be doing. And uh, before we dive into today's subject matter, yes, I did chop the hair. Um, well, I, I love the long hair life, but I just decided to change it up. So hope you guys like it. If not, then it's my hair. <laughs> I'm joking, but not at the same time. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. Today we are going to be reacting to and breaking down something that's branching out of acapella, but I decided that this being one of my favorite songs, I figured that I would just branch out and do something different for once. So today we're going to be looking at What Once Was by Hers. Now this song has been released or this song was originally released in 2016 if i recall correctly and it was by a pair of guys who were from england a rising musicians and it's quickly become one of my favorites and if you like this kind of music i highly doubt that you're not gonna like it it's to me, it's alternative, but it's kind of hard for me to tell with this genre. I just, it's it's really, really mellow alternative, if you ask me. And these guys were fairly popular uh, as far as the rising star side of music is concerned. They were they were making very good headway. Um, tragic story they have though. In short, um, the way it was explained to me is that within the last couple of years, I don't remember exactly what year, but they experienced a tragic accident over in Arizona and uh, they both died in this car wreck. Now, God rest their souls um, and God rest their bodies, but they were on a path to serious success. And this song has quickly become one of my favorites. Also, a side note, the first time I ever heard this song, was in a coffee shop in Flagstaff, Arizona. We were taking a visit out there, me and some family members, and I heard this song playing, and I knew within the first five to ten seconds of me listening to it, it was going to be one of my favorites. And um, whenever I got to digging on this, these two and their music, I got chills sent down my spine whenever I figured out that they actually died in Arizona in this car wreck and Arizona was the first time I heard this song. So <laughs> still get goosebumps just talking about it, but I digress. So we're going to be kind of breaking down what's going on in the music and the vocal technique, primarily the vocal technique within this song. I hope you guys are excited because I've also got more videos coming. that are actually going to be recorded today, but will be released within the week. And, Actually, this is a little bit of a burst in activity because I've been slacking lately. I've just had a lot going on in real life. But I hope you guys are excited as I am to listen to this. And if you guys not heard it before, it's very likely to get caught in your head. But that said, we're going to jump right in. We'll see you in just a second. Also, just a side note before we dive in. If you guys are gaining value and enjoyment out of these videos that I break down for you or where I break down the music for you, and you are enjoying the podcast that I'm putting out here on the channel, I would very much appreciate it if you would hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and I would appreciate also if you would subscribe. We have recently passed over 3,000 subscribers, and I am so very thankful for each and every one of you. Here's to the road to 5,000. And if you are gaining enough enjoyment and entertainment, as well as knowledge out of the videos that I am producing, I would appreciate it if you would give my Patreon a visit. The link is down below for that if you are looking to make a more significant contribution to me, my musical career, and the channel. If you want these videos to continue coming to it, coming to this channel, that is the best way to support me and the channel. With that said, let's dive right in. All right, folks, so here we are. We're going to be listening to this. I will, will be, I will be stopping to comment on the musical aspects of the song and also the vocal technique and i will be stopping a lot so just a fair warning as this is a musical analysis in addition in addition to a reaction also like i said i've reacted to this before off screen i know the song 
So just that also a bit of a caveat there. With that said, we're going to dive right in, listen to what's going on in the music. And this is the live performance of this song in Pace Studios, New York. Volume's good. Here we are. These guys are awesome. Just watch this as talent right here. Watch the way they move with the music. This song is just, it's such a vibe. Listen to the groovy guitar lick, man. This is insane. I just, this is one of my favorite parts of the song and why it's so catchy. Just listen to these guitar licks. And also just a, just a bit of a catch here. There's something to pay attention to is that the gentleman on the left with the toboggan, he is not playing this with a pick. He is finger picking on an electric guitar which is a pretty atypical technique to use on an electronic guitar. Most people that use electronic guitars use picks or at, if they're going to finger pick, they use actual finger picks. And this is an interesting little thing to see here. I'm really, really happy to see that this was actually performed without finger picks or without a pick at all. Very creative. <laughs> All right, so also another interesting thing to really uh, acknowledge and really draw attention to here is that this song is tuned to 432 hertz. And for those that don't know what I'm talking about or what I'm referencing or why I'm referencing it, 432 hertz is the original pitch tuning that all music up until about the 1920s used to be tuned to. And 432 hertz used to be the middle A. Ah! Oh, excuse me. Ah! Oh, no, that's A4. That A, that pitch of A right there, that used to be 432 hertz. Now, why is that significant? Today's music is tuned to 440 hertz, so it's actually 8 hertz off. So music that is tuned to 432 hertz sounds flat. It almost sounds a little bit more solemn or a little bit different, almost a little bit more free, if you will. It sometimes, I mean, it's, it doesn't always sound happier. It just sounds different. It's not something that we're used to hearing. But you find that with music that is tuned to 432 hertz nowadays, you find that it almost feels feels a bit soothing in a way. Soothing puts you in a good mood. You know, I don't know the psychology behind all of this, and I'm not going to pretend like I do. But in about the 1920s is whenever they changed it from 432 hertz to 440 hertz, which means they shifted the tuning of all notes around that middle A to 440 where it was previously 432 that's why older music sounds a little bit flat for those of you with keen ears now nearly all music is at 440 hertz 8 hertz up from the 432 and that is why whenever you hear songs like this it sounds a little bit different and it sounds a little bit more cool soothing and catchy it's it, there's something with the psychology of a 432 hertz. I don't understand it, and I'm not going to pretend like I do, but it's really, really fast. It's a really fascinating phenomenon. So if you've got some time and you want to dive into a rabbit hole, go look up um, 432 hertz tuning. That was a huge tangent, but it's a really nifty little piece, and I think it's part of the reason why this song is so catchy is because it's tuned to 432 hertz. And the reason I know that is because the A flats in this song, they are, they are, it's obvious to me 
because I have perfect pitch that these A flats are a little bit flatter than usual. I'll make sure I cover the 432 hertz difference in a future video so that way it can be more obvious the effect. I also really like the bass lick here. So the electronic or the electric bass guitar here slides up from an A flat G sharp one to an A flat G sharp two. And that's a really nifty little lick to kick in the bass. Very, very good musical choice there. And uh, for those of you time signature gurus out there, and for those of you who like this flow of music, this song is in 6-8 time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, I love this time signature. I love it fiercely. And just look at the way these guys are vibing. This is one of the reasons why I would have loved to see them continue performing if they had not unfortunately made their final, I guess, car ride, if you will, in Arizona. That is really unfortunate to hear because these guys were rising stars and I'm I am it, to say I was devastated when I heard, read about this is an understatement because these guys were going places. Just really take a minute to see and feel the music. You can almost see the music in real time. You can tell if these guys are vibing, vibing hard and really enjoying what they're doing. They are feeling it in their soul. Just watch the way that they're bopping up and down and dancing. see what I'm talking about it's, it's just it's a beautiful thing man also the bass line is really really not really catchy too in addition to the main guitar riff that in the 6-8 time along with the boom boom it's it's so it it's so it goes together so well It supports the main guitar riff so incredibly well. It's literally like a needle in a groove. It's like good old boys and bonfires. Like it, they just they're meant for each other. And right away, I can tell this singer right here, I forgot this gentleman's name, but I could tell right now that he has a wonderful baritone, bass baritone voice like myself, and because you can hear the resonance and quality of his lower range, but he's got that really light timber, right? He's almost got like that punk rock style timber, lower lying punk style timber, and it's 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 a funny little uh, vocal timber because it's not super present. So you've got people like the main lead or the lead singer of Seether is a good example of this. And also, I'm trying to think of who else. Mm, let's see. I, I can't. None or uh, none others are coming to mind right now. But they have that. They have some really nice higher partials in their lower range, but they don't have the timber, which creates this really unique lower lying voice that's capable of highs and lows. It's really fascinating. And see, that's a nice little E flat G or E flat D sharp two there. Wrong. That's just really, it was really pretty. Like, I love it. I mean, it's just more people with voices like this need more attention because they have, they have lower ranges too. They have significant, some of them have very significant lower ranges. Like, I'm not going to brag about myself, but I know there are people that have similar voices to me who have really nice low ranges for 
and can sing bass quite comfortably. They just have a lighter timbre, and it it's just, I love it. Marwan Amen, who is in the bass gang, is a very good example of this. And see, he's doing some vocal contrast here and changing his timber because he's actually, oh, he's, oh, he's darkening in some spots and then he's going back to his original timber, which is a little more open, a little less closed and less cavernous, if you will. He's not intentionally darkening here and that creates this more fluid, ever-changing vocal lines, or these ever-changing fluid vocal lines. I love it. Keeps you on the edge of your seat for those of you who are vocal nerds like me. Keep your mouth tips on. Like, he's just... That was a very nice D-sharp 2. D-sharp E-flat 2. It's amazing. It's just... He's got a really, really nice open vocal range, and he's showing it off well here. So you can really tell here that the vocal, the vocalism or the vocals are very connected here. Maybe I've been here before. I was at the point where all I really wanted was someone. And so it's all connected and legato style. It's not like super slow, but it's connected and it runs all together. But in this style of music and in this particular song, it works so incredibly well and it fits his vocals as well as the genre of the music. It's just, it's all the chef's kiss. It, everything in this song goes together so well. And he's just got the perfect voice to sing in this style. And it's like, it's not super low effort singing because he's clearly trying here, but it it's, it's like he's not doing a lot of vocal. He's not in inducing a lot of vocal stress in order to do what he's doing. This is all within his natural range, and he's just kind of flowing with the music and not trying super hard. So, baby, I've been there before. I was at the point where all I really wanted was someone. And it's just... Again, everything is flowing together so well. You weave it, you mesh all this stuff together, you've got one heck of a song and one really catchy song that's going to succeed. And those are... Uh, that's a dip into head voice there, but it's it was very clean for a live performance. Very very clean for a live performance. I love it. Tell me all the important stuff. Tell me all the important stuff. Like it's just a very rich but light timber. It just incredible. What's your favorite color? So again. Fluid, changing the timber, not keeping it exactly the same. I harp on this all the time in music. Variation in your arrangements in music is critical to keeping a listener hooked. I think it's red. And can we just take a minute to really acknowledge how into it the bass player is getting? I've, I don't remember their individual names, but they just, it is magic what is happening on screen right now. And also just listening to the changes in the melodies of 
verse one and two after the chorus. It's almost completely different, different feels, different connections on different beats. And tell me all the important stuff. What's your favorite color? What makes you so tough? It's different. So much variation, but it's not too much to the point to where it feels chaotic. It's amazing. The bass is pretty high up here. And look how far he is up on the uh, the fretboard. Very, very nice control. You can Not only can you tell they're vibing, they are pinpoint precise with the guitar, the bass, and the singing all at once. True talent being... The amount of true talent being exuded from this video here, unmatched. And you can really tell that the you're they're letting the music control them, right? So they're they're not really controlling the music, even though they're the ones that are performing the song. These the the music is controlling them, like the beats going. They're playing the guitar, playing the bass, but you can really understand that they are vibing because the music is controlling them, and the vocals are controlling them, and they're just letting the music do what it needs. It's just. You can tell that these guys were destined for greatness just by the way you can see them singing, performing, etc. It's just, it's unfortunate what happened. And here's the area where the bridge would normally be, and I just... It's just so incredible. More head voice from our lead singer here, and it's very high quality. And this is probably my favorite breakdown of any song to date. Just listen to the guitar and bass, how well they mesh together in this part here. It's just so melodic, and you're just like, Ooh, listen. Right here. It's so rhythmic that you just want to, you're just like, you just, you just want to bob along to it. The psychedelic effect this song has on you and your mental psyche is insane. And then they go back into the chorus. Let's listen to the breakdown again because that's just pure music magic right here. Listen to this. Back to the melody of the chorus, and it's just music magic. Hanging on to each and every word of the song because it's so legato. <laughs> It's just listen to the nice vocal slide here. So well controlled. Low effort, but so well controlled at the same time. It's kind of backwards. Such a rich voice, man.
And that's an incredible end to that vibe of a, a song. It's such an incredible vibe. Ba, 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 ba. That it's that's a really nice rapid slowdown in music. It's a retardando. And fantastic end to a fantastic song. And the only words I have to describe this are music, magic, ear candy. <laughs> Folks, I enjoyed breaking this down for you. One of my favorite songs of all time. And the best part about it is that I didn't suspect it was going to be a favorite song of all time. I was in a coffee shop in downtown Flagstaff, Arizona. I heard this playing on the speakers in the coffee shop. And I'm just like, I have to figure out what this song is right now. And I literally said, hey, Siri, what song is this? And she started listening and then she told me about it. As she was like, sounds like blah, blah, blah. I went to YouTube, played it, and I was like, this is my new favorite song. This is insane. <laughs> Folks, this has been the end of the video. Um, man, I just... It's just true magic what was on screen here and happening in the audio. And I hope you guys appreciate it as much as I do now because that was just... It leaves me speechless every time. So... Like I said, guys, at the beginning, if you were gaining musical value, enjoyment, and entertainment out of my videos, I'd appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe. A lot of my viewers are actually not subscribed, so if you were here and made it this far, I would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell when you're and be notified every time I post a video. And if you have the means and are wanting to support the channel in a big way, I would encourage you to check out my Patreon page. Link is in the description. Guys, I love you. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey, y'all. This video was made possible by patrons like Miss Nancy Flesher. If you were interested in becoming a patron, make sure you hit the link down below. So that way you can get vocal shout outs, names at the end of the video, and many more other really cool benefits. Love you. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.